we have a great common problem that we need to resolve. And Stacy is going to give you some resources for that. Hi, thanks for your patience. I'm really loud. I don't even need this microphone. So I promise you'll be able to hear me in the back. Uh, I am Stacy Jesse, um, and I'm one of the co founders of East Manatee Preservation Association. We are a nonprofit, and our mission is to help the community to make you aware of what's going on, to preserve all that makes Old Florida great, and to really advocate on behalf of East County residents uh, with the rest of Manatee County. One of the first things, I'm just going to go through a list of resources. But we do have someone here. Um, I know many of you, it's our first like 24 hours without real rain. You should be out there on your property because it's almost kind of dry right now. But those of you who need immediate assistance and resources because of the flooding that's just not stopping, there is a disaster recovery center at Lakewood Ranch Library. FEMA is there, the Small Business Administration. There are emergency response teams. They will help you right there, fill out your FEMA application so you don't mess it up. And they have a representative from that disaster response center that is here today. Miguel, would you want to come up and just tell us about what you're doing? He will be in the back foyer for a little bit longer, and we have a bunch of pamphlets in the back right. If you need immediate assistance, go out there and speak to him. You won't hurt my feelings. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so first of all, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you all. As uh, Stacy mentioned, my name is Mikel Scott. I'm a representative of the State Emergency Response Team with the Division of Emergency Management. First of all, I want to take a quick survey of hands. How many folks are here at Manatee County residents? All right. So I'm talking to the right people, right? All right. So if any of you all, number two, question how many people had some kind of direct damage from Hurricane Debbie to your homes or to your business? Okay, the, no, Hurricane Debbie, specifically Hurricane Debbie damage to your home or to your business, all right? So these folks, and for the ones that don't have your hand up, listen in for a friend, as we mentioned, at the, at the Lakewood Ranch Library, we have a disaster recovery center where FEMA and the SBA are present on site from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Saturday. And what does that mean for you all? I know a lot of people maybe have never experienced these type of issues before with damage to your home related to a natural disaster. But what you can find on site, there are gonna be FEMA representatives that are gonna be able to help you with any type of damage claims that you might have for those individuals that are homeowners, renters. That's gonna be a great opportunity for you all to go and speak with the representative from FEMA to be able to help you better understand what your resources look like and what your options are for getting you some support. Also, for those of you that might be business owners, the SBA is also on site and is going to be able to provide you with a lot of great information that you can get to address any business damages that you might have had. Uh, and that's going to be an opportunity also for homeowners that might not have gotten all the resources they need from FEMA or might be looking to take out a very small interest loan from the SBA to address some of the major damages immediately to your home. It's going to be a great chance for you to get some information on that as well. So. We really are encouraging anybody that was impacted, please make sure you uh, spread the awareness to your families and friends because these centers are open while they are being utilized. So if they're underutilized and people are sitting at home that need this help, uh, they go away. So I wanna encourage you all to go as soon as you can, as quickly as possible. Today might not be the best day because they're gonna close at 7 p.m., but starting Monday of next week, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., the site is gonna be open. Uh, and anybody that needs the assistance, please, please come out uh, to get some um, information that can help you in your situation. One last thing I want to also make you aware of is the Activate Hope program. This is a part of Hope Florida under the Department of Children and Families. This is an initiative that Governor DeSantis' wife, Casey DeSantis, has recently launched and is also providing unmet needs resources for folks that have already gone to FEMA, might have already gone to your insurance, but you still need some assistance with some other things like food resources, utility resources, cleaning up your home. These are the types of things that you'll be able to get through going through Hope Florida. So I think also if you were to take your phone out right now and scan that QR code that's on the screen, it's gonna open you up to an assessment that you can take. It's very easy to, to fill out. That's gonna put you in line to get some additional resources as well. So just wanna make sure that we encourage you guys, tell your families, tell your friends, and stay safe. Thank you all. Amen. thank you. We really appreciate you coming out here on such short notice and sharing that information. Um, and yeah, in the back table in the right, that Activate Hope information is there, as well as some of the disaster response center brochures that I 
took from them yesterday when I was there. Um, so I ran, I only made 100 of these and there's a lot more than 100 of you there. Um, so I'm just kind of gonna go through this really fast. Most of the information is here, but my goal is to make help you connected where you need to be connected if you want more information about whether your property was in a floodplain, why it's flooding. Um, I can help you find those maps and I'll kind of show you how all those websites work. If you want to fight the county and know how to go and speak at those meetings, we can help you with that. There's not going to be a lot of time at the end for question and answers, but the email address for East Manatee Preservation is on this flyer. Contact me there. If you want a specific person that spoke today, I will get you in touch with that person. So I can kind of act as that resource if you want specific information you hear today. Um, so yeah, if you have flooding, if you need help now, the two primary uh, things you want are Manatee County's 311. That is kind of where they streamline their services. If the county needs to give you information, you call 311 or you go to their app or you can go to their website. They have a storm update center. So if it starts flooding again and you need sandbags, it says where those sandbags are. If you need to clear out debris, whatever it is you need to do that has to do with the county, you can get that information there. And they have extended hours. I think they'll answer now until like 11 o'clock at night. So you start flooding at 10 o'clock at night, give them a call and hopefully they will point you in the right direction. You've just heard from the Disaster uh, Relief Center, Lakewood Ranch Library, that entire second floor, they've got this command center set up there. So if you need help, please uh, go ahead there when they're open. Uh, go ahead to the next slide. Um, Dalton touched on this. Mark did a much better job. How does the water flow? Um, we haven't had rain like this in a while. And so we're seeing that the rain will find, you know, water will find a way. So if you want to know more about how that water works, you're hearing watersheds, drainage basins, all these terms. The, uh, the Manatee County Water Atlas that's done by the University of South Florida is a phenomenal resource. It will define those terminology. It'll tell you about water quality. It will talk about those impaired uh, waterways that Mark was talking about. It'll give you a lot of that information. There's also the Southwest Florida Water Management District. Uh, we call it SWIFT MUD. It's not a perfect acronym, but that is SWIFT MUD. There are five water districts across the state of Florida, and that is ours. It's that purple one. No, go back there. It's that purple one right there. Um, and they are in charge of water management plans. Um, they do the investigations. They provide the permitting. So if you think that salt meadows or someone, if their runoff is what's causing you to flood and it's never flooded before, it is Swift Mud who should be doing that investigation. You can pull their permits. They have to get permission to build the retention and their detention ponds and all of that. And you can actually go on their website. I took a screenshot. Those green areas all were required a permit. And you can pull up the permit, see what they were allowed to do. And then if you need someone to help you read that, then you can talk to someone and say, actually, like Dalton was saying, that retention pond did not do as it was supposed to. It's clearly not to code and figure out what's going wrong, why those surrounding communities maybe are causing an issue. Next page, sir. They also have incredible floodplain maps. This is a map, um, you can see, um, 675 is the road kind of that goes in the center. You can see curving right through all of the yellow. There you go, right there. And you can see the yellow is all floodplain and then the red below it are new development areas. So a lot of people don't know if they're new to this area that, hey, these new developments are built in floodplains. Yes, they're trying to lift you up, but the water still has to go somewhere. So to know who's in a floodplain, I think that kind of explains a lot. And then FEMA, in addition to providing disaster relief, they're also the ones that affect our flood insurance and they come up with flood maps. One of the interesting things that's been pointed out by a lot of community members is some of those maps haven't been updated since 2014. The one I pulled up here, it shows that it was last revised in 2021, but the topography changes. The elevation is changing as all these new subdivisions are building up a lot higher. And we're not seeing that these updates are happening in real time. So when the county has to decide it's project gonna have a negative impact on surrounding communities, if they don't have new data, how are they gonna know what's actually gonna impact the properties and the lives of the people already there? So you can see again, I mean, we have um, all of that flood AE and, and flood zone A are the teal color. And then you have a regulatory floodway and Claire, you show 675, I think it is running. That is 675 up there. Um, and that's that new community. Um, I think that's where like North River Animal Hospital is right kind of in the center um, near the top there. 
So understanding the topography, the flood areas, if you want that, you can find that by looking here. Um, next slide. And then finally, if you want to know what's coming next in your backyard, a lot of us are really concerned about the proposed Pope Ranch project. We'll be posting about this um, all weekend on Humanity Preservation's Facebook page. They're proposing, what is it, 440 homes right there, um, just north of the intersection of Rye and Rutland. Uh, the timing seems a little tone deaf if you ask me. Obviously, we are not prepared for these kinds of rains. Um, we've got some amazing community members and resources in the audience. Um, Sean up here is one of them. He lives in Hillsboro. Sean, wave up here. He knows a lot about what's happening, but Sean made a really good point to me. He said, you know, they keep calling this a 100-year or a 300-year event, and it's unprecedented. But he said, you know what? Hurricane Andrew in the 90s was unprecedented. That you know, Category 5 storm that was catastrophic. And you know what they did from this unprecedented storm that was a 500-year planning event? They changed the building codes. They changed the way we developed based on an unprecedented storm. They didn't say, oh, it won't happen again. Debbie needs to set the bar. It's going to raise the bar. We're going to say, hey, we have to do better. We have to build storm water, right? <laughs> we have to plan our storm water. We have to approve new developments, knowing how they are going to impact the properties and the people that are already there. This is ruining lives and businesses. Um, every day right now. So if you want to know more, you're welcome to ask me, but there is a website and I created a tiny URL. You can see every new development property that's been approved or might be approved. They're all there in red. Then if you click one, you zoom in on Pope Ranch there and it says ACA Deep Link. That will give you every single document that developer or builder has had to submit to the county. Every piece of correspondence with the county, every environmental report, traffic report, site plan, you can see all of it. Um, so some of the maintenance records, if it has to do with stormwater, you can find in the ERP reports. You won't find most of those. You can see the construction plans. You can see how big the sewage and the drainage facilities are going to be, the pipes, but not necessarily the maintenance. And these are primarily for new things that are being developed. Right, oh yeah, and that would be a lot of that swift mud. Once you get to that Acela portal, you're gonna wanna click where it says record info, and then um, those two arrows where it says attachments. And this one has over eight pages of attachments. In general, I go to like the last page, and you're looking for something that says site plan. So I clicked site plan, and then you'll see on, if you have one of these, it shows, but Claire, go to the next slide. You've got this huge PDF that takes forever to download, and that's the cover page. And then go to the next one. And if you zoom in on all the fine print, it starts to talk about how big these are, how much wetlands uh, impact there's going to be. There's lots of information there. And then go to the next page. And then if you keep going through all the other documents that the, that the developer has submitted, you're going to see all of that red with, where Pope branches. Those are flood zones A, A, E, and B, E. Those are high-risk flood zones that they are children choosing to build or consider building 440 homes into. But it's okay because you know what? They're just going to raise that elevation. So, so if right, if you live next to them, you should be concerned. I, I, it would be my opinion that you should be concerned. And again, this other one just shows everything that's going on next to it. Um, so this is all information that is at our fingertips if you know how to access it. Um, and then I'm not going to go over it, but if you want to speak at a Board of County Commission meeting, they're generally Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 a.m. Most of us have jobs and lives, but you can call in now. You can put that thing on in the background on YouTube, and when they get to your item, call in and say something. And finally, we're here to help. Um, you've got my email address there. You can find me on Facebook and message me or on Instagram. We're just like four of us on there that are actively responding, but we've been doing this for a couple years and we are here to help. So don't be afraid to reach out if you're trying to figure it out or have questions. Thank you.